Training Tip Tuesday. It is me, Andy Chadwick, and I've got another awesome Training Tip Tuesday for you. Now this week we're going to be training the calves, and they're quite a common area for people to ignore, feel like they're not going to make progress, and oftentimes they just don't train them hard enough or with enough volume or enough load to see a great enough response through their calves. Now some people will train their calves really hard, i.e. me included, and actually not see any development. But we can still train them over time and it will still create hypertrophy, growth, strength, okay? So we want to make sure we're training them. So we're going to get down to it. First thing we've got to look at with the calf is the movement classifications. We've got to look at the musculature and how they're kind of set up in the calf region because it's going to be an understanding that we need to know when it comes to training the calves themselves. So the first thing we've got to look at is the muscles. The first one we've got to look at is the soleus and the soleus attaches at the heel bone or the calcaneus and it runs up through and it attaches just below the knee joint, again key, just below the knee joint to the tibia and fibula. Okay. The next one we've got to look at is the gastrocnemius. Now the gastrocnemius still attaches at the calcaneus or the heel bone. It runs up, same as the soleus, but attaches above the knee joint. It's known as biarticular because it's crossing two joints, so the ankle and the knee. Now both muscles aid in plantar flexion, but the gastrocnemius also plays a part in knee flexion. So whenever we're doing any hamstring curls, whether seated or lying, when we do a hamstring curl and we contract, the calf still activates due to the fact that it crosses the knee joint. Now this is huge to understand because when we look at training the calves, we also get activation when we train the hamstrings as well. Exercises, reps, technique. First exercise I'm going to give you would be a standing calf raise. And this can be done on the stairs, it can be done on the machine, on the step, whatever it may be. You can do a donkey kick, a donkey variation. And it's simply going to require a greater range of motion, lowering the heel down past 90 degrees, getting into that dorsiflex position before extending back up into that plantar flex position where you're going to squeeze at the top. The second one I'm going to give you is a partial raise. So the partial raise is real simple where we stand and we're on the floor, we're kind of taking out the, the dorsiflex position and we're starting from a neutral position and we're driving on up to the top and squeezing at the top. So we're getting to the top position and we're just working through maybe a, a 45, 30 degree range of motion, but we're able to work the muscle at its shortest point where it's at its weakest. So this is a great place that we can overload the calves for them to grow. The final one is a seated calf raise. Now a seated calf raise is great because it targets the soleus more. Remember how we said that the gastrocnemius crosses the knee joint? When we've got our knee bent and we're performing a calf raise, we're taking a lot of the calf or the gastrocnemius out and we're going to focus solely a lot on the soleus, which is a fantastic move to have. So when we, cross the knee, when we don't cross the knee joint and we have our knees bent at 90 degrees and we perform our calf raises, we're going to get some calf work done on the soleus and we're going to target the soleus more. Why is this important to do in terms of a seated calf raise? It's simply because the soleus has more hypertrophy potential. And that's a great thing that we can use to be able to grow our calves. So if you don't have access to a seated calf raise, don't worry, I'm gonna give you an exercise that you can do using a bench, using two dumbbells, and maybe a plate. So moving on to the actual kind of technique of the exercises. Standing calf raise, when we're on the stairs, we wanna make sure that we're lowering down the heel as far as we can. It's important here that we pause at the bottom. Now, the big reason why I wanna pause at the bottom here is because the Achilles tendon has a great potential energy storage kind of unit. And when we get to the bottom, if we don't pause and we simply bounce back up, Oftentimes the Achilles tendon is doing all the work and the calf isn't actually producing the energy or the force to be able to move us back up. So we want to get to the bottom of the rep, we want to pause and then we want to drive back up using the calves. Primarily when we're standing we're going to use the gastrocnemius although we will get some soleus activation and there is some data now that shows that having the toes turned in, having the toes turned out, having them in a neutral position will work specific areas of the calves. Moving on to the seated calf raise, you can do toes in on this one, I don't know whether they have a greater potential, it might be worth someone else commenting it and letting us know, but I turn the toes in works the lateral portion of the calf, so if we do a seated calf raise and we have the toes turned in, because the soleus attaches just below the knee joint, 
on the lateral portion. Yes, there is a potential that we could target the celeus a little bit more on a seated calf raise if we turn our toes in. So my best advice would be toes neutral, toes turned in on the seated calf raises. You can have the toes out, toes neutral, toes in on the, on the standing calf raises. Finally, the partial raises. We're going to go from the floor, feet hip width, and we're going to drive on up, squeezing at the top, making sure that we get that pause. Try not to rest too long on the floor, but make sure that we're getting that good pause and that good squeeze at the top. And that's going to be great here. And in terms of what we should be doing for rep ranges with these exercises, we want to make sure that we're getting higher volume in. And the reason why for this is most people have type 1 fibres in their calves. And it's not that we only have type 1 fibres, but predominantly the majority of our fibres are type 1. So they're very slow twitch. And what I mean by that is if we look at runners, for example, they have a lot of slow twitch fibres in their body. And it's simply because they have the ability to endure a lot of running or a lot of volume. Now, when we look at the calves and we say there's a lot of type 1 fibres, what we know from that is overloading them with five reps is not going to be good because it's not going to create the, the change in the development that we are looking for. Don't get me wrong, it's certainly okay to do them for a couple of sets, but in the long run, we're looking more volume. We're looking for the ability to go maybe 10 to 15 reps, if not maybe 20 reps, but again, still keeping that pause in there. We're looking for the, the whole kind of, can we increase the load while keeping the volume high? We want to develop the type 1 fibres to be able to get them to grow, but we can also go with the type 2 fibres. If we're looking at percentages, and this is just anecdotal, we might be looking at 75-25. 75% will be slow twitch and 25% would be fast twitch. And the fast twitch fibres have a lot more potential for hypertrophy than the slow twitch does. So can we do maybe 75% of our training more volume, 25% of it more hypertrophy and load related? And that's going to be a great idea to look at. In terms of how many reps we should be doing per set, per, per session, per week, there's been kind of data that says that around 200 reps a week is great to be able to see hypertrophy potential from your calves. So what that might look like in terms of a training session, we might want to do two sessions a week on lower body. We may even want to do three sessions on calves specifically. So what we would look at here is on the screen. We're going to look at maybe 70 reps per session if split into three sessions if we're only going to do two sessions we might want to do 140 which is going to be a long time so we might do some German volume training which would be a great idea to throw in for that set or for that workout so the common errors that we see as you will have known kind of what I spoke about a minute ago what we tend to see with people is bouncing, and that's primarily the only issue that we see with calves. When we're looking at the actual calf rate itself, we'll see people bouncing at the bottom of the movement and not really paying much attention to the calf itself, and just the Achilles at the tendon is taking all the tension and creating all the force. Now, this will often lead to people not actually seeing development in their calves, getting disheartened, apathy sets in, and people stop training their calves because they just don't grow. Now what we look at here is if we take out the bouncing, can we now activate the calf a lot more, get more potential from the actual, actual gastrocnemius and the soleus to the point where they develop and they hypertrophy. That's what we want to look at there. The only other thing that I would potentially look at with people when they're doing calf raises, if they're loading up too heavy, they may just get a little bit of knee flexion and knee extension before they drive up in their calf raise and we may just find that people are taking too much tension through the car, through the, the quads rather than the calves. So as they're going into their knee flexion and they're driving up, they're losing en energy and they're losing load through the quads being able to drive up. So if they can squat a lot more than they can calf raise, we're not going to be getting their full potential through the calves. So we want to make sure that we're loading up the calves by A, softening the knees. Yes, we don't want to lock them out because the tension goes into the knee joint itself. So soft knees, but allow the calf to do the work itself, okay? So making sure that we're not allowing any knee flexion or extension in the movement, but we're keeping an isometric contraction in the knees and we're driving up through the calves themselves. Folks, that's this week Training Tip Tuesday. It's direct, it's to the point, and that's what I want. I want it to be informative, but I want it to be simple for you to understand. 
make sure you go ahead and check out all the videos in the series. Go ahead and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. And I'll see you all next week for another Training Tip Tuesday. It's me, Andy Chabik, and I'm out. Peace.